channel. My name is Jackie. I'm a setter and coach from Toronto, Ontario, and today we are doing another setting video. I set it up the block every Tuesday, and today we were setting this area where there's a slab and an overhang, and I got to set the slab, which I was really excited about. I was in charge of setting a pink tape, a red tape, and a blue tape, which is about um, V9 for the pink tape, V7-ish for the red tape, and V3 or so for the blue tape. My goal with setting these was to really have people trust their feet um, and really make it feel like slabs. I don't have too much more to add, so let's get into the setting day. I decided to start with the red tape or the V7 just because I wanted to use some volumes. I wanted it to be volume slab because I was using pretty big holds I decided to set this one first and have the others work around it. Now I'm just playing around with the volumes and deciding kind of what vibe I want to go for. I used these expression dual text holds uh, as well as some fit, um, fit volumes. And yeah, again, just playing around with the orientation of the volumes and stepping back, taking a look at it to see how it's how it's looking, trying to imagine what it would climb like. And then I'm putting up the finish hold and I was imagining like a big jump to finish and it kind of being like a committing move. But then I kind of felt like it would lose that trust in your feet aspect that I wanted to keep. So I put the hold upside down and move the volume around a little bit. And then I thought about it and these volumes seem really hard to stand on alone. Thinking about what to add onto it, I tried adding another volume, like doing a little bit of a stack, but then it would be too juggy. So I tried to find it in between and I found this really small volume. It's kind of hard to see. And then I decided to completely change my direction and got rid of all of these big fiberglass holds. I felt like there were too many big things. I decided to keep the volumes, have it be mostly in the feet and keep the hands really small. So I replace all of the big fiberglass holds with some small, tiny dual text crimps. And not even crimps, they're just like no shadows. Putting that as the finish hold, I wanted it to be like a pistol squat, no hands finish. And then I just finished off by set screwing, taping. And that was my completed skeleton. Now we're moving on to the pink tape which, like I said, is about V9. I went with these Rock City Crescents. Um, they're super pretty. I love these holds, especially on slab, because they're pretty bad. Some of them are super juggy, but a lot of them, at least the ones that we have, are basically nothing. Like, you can really only use them on a flat wall or slab. And I thought of maybe doing this kind of press situation at the start where you get your hands up and you start to push away from the second hold to stand up. Um, but I knew that it would be really hard because your feet would be in an overhang whereas your hands are on a slab and the feet are not really positive. So that, I kind of knew that that would be an issue but I left it for forerunning. And then I decided to switch out this small finish foot for a bigger foot and actually turned it upside down and used it as a volume and added a jib on top which is a trick i kind of learned recently and have been abusing to be honest and that is the completed skeleton for my pink tape and now we're moving on to my blue tape and i'm going with some flat holds and fit volumes i wanted to get a climb that was pretty body tensiony um, insecure hands, but decent feet. So it's all about kind of trusting the feet and standing up, finding the right spot on the hands so you feel secure. Yeah, this one didn't take too long to set and I was kind of forerunning it as I was setting. And I 
end up trying it here and it was just way too hard. Like this crimp was nothing, the foot was really small. So I moved to the foot a little bit closer, which allowed me to rock over it. And I started to get somewhere, but still these crimps were really bad. I decided to change out the start hold for a much bigger one. And that helped a little bit with like pressing up, but really the crimp was the problem. So I wet fired off that crimp, did not feel good. I decided to swap out the crimp for a volume. I moved some of the flat hold fiberglass around. I thought this was a pretty cute setup. Added the finish hold, moved a couple of other things around. And then after lunch, we got into forerunning. We're starting off with the blue tape that I set. We usually start off with the easier climbs and make our way up to um, the harder climbs. My blue tape was actually really close. We ended up making the feet better. I thought it felt pretty good. Like I was really happy with this boulder. <laughs> Setter, Ali, said that the crimps weren't too good so we decided to flatten them and that made them a little bit better and I replaced one of them with a better crimp. And we ended up swapping out the finish hold for crimp as well, partially for looks and partially because uh, we didn't really need the finish hold to be that big or that good. Anyways, now we're moving on to this red tape that I set and this one was pretty far off, like uh, definitely too difficult and quite awkward. We made some small tweaks, changed things little by little, we started by making this second foothold better that you get around the corner. Uh, still this hand was not too good. As you can see, my coworker ends up firing off of it. Yeah, he did not like that hold. We also made that crimp on the small volume a little bit more comfortable because um, because Ali said that you could feel the screw hole when you were grabbing the crimps and that's not a really nice sensation so we brought it a little closer now we switched the foothold out made it even better but still i think the hand was really the issue not the foothold we made the hand better we replaced it with this fiberglass hold so i swap my feet get it around the corner and then I can start to push away and yeah this hand was definitely a good idea made it much easier to get around the corner and then here's Joseph trying it although it felt pretty easy to me I do think that this press kind of move is quite difficult if you're taller since um, you it's very low whereas it's at like my chest uh, but for a taller person you have to pretty much like get over and around it with that hold by sort of your stomach area so quite a bit harder for taller people and Joseph did not think that it was blue tape but Ellie made it he uh, figured out how to get around this volume and corner swaps his feet and then he tries to go for the last move, which is a pretty hard pistol squat here. Now Sean is trying it. It looks like he like almost fell, but he started to compress the aret. Looked pretty comfortable. Gets his right foot over. Grabs the bottom of the volume. And then rocks over and starts to stand up and does a pistol squat and he agreed that it was pretty easy so we decide to make the foot worse and still it was looking a little bit too comfortable to match that foot so we made it even worse 
I give it a try. <laughs> the feet are pretty blind, so there is quite a bit of foot slipping. And still, I was finding that it didn't make a huge difference. The foot was too wide. Now we made the foot much smaller, and as you can see, Sean is having a little bit more trouble swapping the feet, but he finds this press beta where he gets his right hand on the volume and does the press. So I give that a try as well, and I was able to do it, but I wasn't super happy with how little you were weighting your feet now. Like you pretty much were just on your arms for that foot swap, so I wanted it to be more in the feet, so we swapped out the small volume for a no shadow. So here is Ali trying to get his feet over and he feels really sketched out with trying to stand on this volume. And now here I'm trying to do the same thing. And then I realize I can just get all the way down to that no shadow and do the press foot swap again. So we ended up moving the volume, making it a bit flatter so that the hand would be too low for the press to feel comfortable. So you can see that Ali just looks really uncomfortable trying to get his hand down there. And so does Sean. He tries to get like a toe hook, but that doesn't really work. Tries to get his foot up, but it's super hard to trust uh, this really slopey volume and having no hands doesn't make it easier. He goes for the foot swap, but falls. And then here I'm trying the foot swap. I end up falling, but it was close enough that we decided it definitely goes and moved on to the last section here. And this is a really challenging pistol squat. So give it one last go, make sure that the final move goes as is. We can stand up all the way and then I finish. Now we are moving on to the last climb of the day, this pink tape. Uh, I forgot to record our first attempt on it, but it was really far off. The foot was too bad. You weren't really able to move at all. So we made the foot significantly better. We grabbed this like really, really juggy foothold. And even though it's such a good foot, you feel really stuck. It's also on an overhang. So you're not, it's not as good as it looks. So here we are trying to figure out how to get stood up and start the problem. And then Sean kind of figures out that you can keep pressing your way up. Uh, we end up moving the hold. We make it a little bit less under clinging so that you can start to push away from it, lay back on it a little bit. And we're getting closer. And I try to use the start hand, or I mean the start foot to stand up, but it doesn't really help me at all. It just gets me more stuck. And then Sean keeps riding his hands up and finally stands up. And now he's trying to figure out what to do next. I grab a jug so that we can get into that next move and figure out the next sequence. Here I am trying to figure out how to get higher. I intended for a press on this dual text hold, but it was not happening. The dual text hold wasn't quite positive enough. So here's Sean trying it. So he uses the yellow flat holds volume above. And then we bring that foot closer and decide that this is going to be the sequence. You get stood up. You're kind of like using the second hold as an undercling and then reach down. And then I go for the next hold and it's a pretty bad hold. We decide to get rid of that small foothold. It just felt like you could get nothing out of it. And we use the Rock City hold as a foot instead. And we put it right side up. And now Sean tries it and he can just reach it. So he reaches it, swaps feet. And then he's trying to figure out what to do next. The next foot is very, very far away. So he has to like do this far, far reach over. And he kind of manages, but 
even if he did get the foot, it would be really hard to rock over it. So we move the hand closer so that I'm able to reach it like he is. And then we thought maybe we could try turning that hold around and having people stand on the dual text and match it. And so Sean is trying to stand up on the dual text, but it's really weird and very high. So he brings it down a touch to see if that will make it a little bit easier to stand on, but still it's like very, very challenging to stand on the dual text. It's not positive enough. Um, and also there's this blue volume kind of around your crotch area and that makes it even more difficult to, to navigate this sequence. And so I get the foot over, get it on this hold. Sean gets the foot, he's taking his time and he starts to rock over his left foot. Nice and slow and he gets low and this allows the hands to feel a little bit better too because he, because they're pretty much slopers. So we move the second last hold and we were going to just move it closer to the arete because um, that's where he was kind of headed, but he decides to flip it around and have it be a Gaston. And I thought this was a really cool decision. And then here I am trying it really taking my time, somehow still on, getting a press, getting stood up, and then I sort of do press to do the foot swap. So that was kind of like the move that we had going on on the red tape earlier. And then I get a toe hook and this was super cool. I just, yeah, I didn't even expect that at all. So it was cool that um, I kind of figured that out on the fly and that helped me reach over to the arete. So yeah, super psyched with that sequence. Sean ended up just turning the foot a little bit to make it slightly more difficult. Here are the final boulders. This is the blue tape. Turned out really fun. Do a little bit of twisting and turning, grabbing the holds in this kind of weird way where you have to wrap it on top. And then we have a little cluster of crimps with a cramp finish. Whoa, what are you doing? Jackie, Jackie, yeah. what's your official prediction for this red tape? So my prediction is that I'm gonna send it. I'm gonna send this shit It's a good ass so prediction. Hard. working on the pink tape. I'm like slowly starting to figure out how to get stood up. And then at this attempt, I'm really pushing, getting my hands up, standing, standing, standing. I wish you could see my face because I was trying so hard. And at this point here, I was getting pumped just because it's like a very, very taxing start. Here I finally figure out how to get stood up on the start hold swap my feet and then get my left foot up. I'm just trying to recompose myself for the next section. But I get really tired, so kind of fall off. Here we are trying this again, a little bit cleaner with the start. And I know the beta, so I'm not doing as much thinking. over 
And then I managed to get this hand, I match it. And I'm trying to get my foot over, but I kind of fall out of balance. So again, getting the foot over a little bit closer. And uh, at this point, I had been at the gym for a couple of hours after setting, so decided to call it for the day. I'll try to go back for it and hopefully send it, but I, yeah, I was really happy with how the setting day went. I loved forerunning these climbs with my team and I loved all of the tweaks that we ended up making, but it kind of bothers me that there are few faces, like funny looking, maybe kind of evil looking faces on the slab. So let me know if you see them too. If you made it to this point of the video, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.